somebody knows it's time to go. Now this is a dog park. Yeah, no kidding. So we just rolled in here to the KOA Oklahoma City East. Um, really good travel day. I mean, it was all Interstate 40, kind of just a boring straight drive. But, you know, we got here just before dark. This is a really nice KOA. And the size of this dog park, I mean, it's, it's probably half a football field long and wider. It's nice. Or we've been mooch dogging for like a month. So we've had like lots of farmland and woods and open area to turn the dogs out. We were thinking, well, we got to get back in the habit of putting Leashing. them on leashes again. <laughs> uh, it takes her two seconds to warm up to a new place. So there is a pen right behind us with a bunch of chickens. Now, Eris noticed it right away. She was on Is that KOA owned? I don't know. I mean, there's kinkers up there. There's legit chickens up there. But chickens, it, I assume it's part of the land. Yeah, I don't know. It says, that it said on the map that there's a lot of things under expansion here and there's a lot of like new roads that have been bulldozed through that haven't been paved yet and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, power's good, water pressure's good. It's clean. The sights are easy, golf cart, escort. And something that doesn't happen very often at all, especially on a gravel site, is just so everybody believes me, were we not pretty much dead level as soon as we pulled in? Dead level. Dead level. Like, I mean, we don't have the level mate pro, but with according to the level and how little yeah. it had to work, give us a little. Yeah. Level site, huge dog park. Yeah, clean. It doesn't get much better than that. Yeah, we're looking forward to a good few days here and yeah, getting back in travel mode. Okay, so I solved the mystery of the chicken coop. There is a chicken coop up there and it's a big one, but there's a like a fifth wheel park beside it and then there's an actual house behind it. So I'm guessing it's the campground owners or the campground host or something like that. But yeah, we're still in the South. It doesn't bother me a bit. If we had a chicken coop right outside our camper, I wouldn't care, it's just home to me. City Memorial at the Alfred P. Murray Federal Building that was bombed in 1995. We've actually been out here before. We came probably 15 or so years ago when Isaac was really little and they've done a lot since then. So if you've been and you haven't been in several years, come back, um, support the memorial. This was a huge thing that just that rocked our country and, and impacted everybody around the world, whether you were here or a thousand miles away or just watching it on TV. So it's a very, um, very humbling very solemn place to come this is actually the area where the building stood we couldn't do any video inside the memorial because they had rules against it we were able to take a few pictures that we could show you uh, but this is actually where the building stood this is outside this part's actually free to tour um, parking's five bucks if you don't do the museum but they actually have a chair for every person who passed away um, so this is for the 168 people who were killed nine rows of chairs or for the nine rows of the federal building and where that person may may have been either working or visiting or doing some kind of business that day um and just the heartbreaker is you know seeing the small chairs you know for the kids that that's really tough but you know it's a it's an important part of our history even though it's hard to uh to watch and look and listen to if you're in the area or have time it's a very humbling experience but it's very beautiful it's very well done it's definitely worth your time
So this is the survivor tree, and you can see it's it's beautiful. You actually have to back up a lot to see it, but sorry about the wind. The interesting thing about this tree is that it was about 200 or so feet away from ground zero and was hit and was uh, peppered with glass and pieces of metal and all kinds of debris and discolored everything else but they think it was planted around 1920 here when this was all still kind of residential it's a symbol of resilience if nothing else and, and it's a beautiful tree and we got a little friend watching us right up there just kind of checking us out it's nice oh. he's just hanging out hi mister let's go see what's up next Just left the Oklahoma City bombing memorial. Yeah, it took about uh, it took about three hours to get through. We took our time. Granted, we'd been here before, so we kind of knew what to expect. Um, they have lot. changed. It's, it's probably been, like I said earlier, 15 years since we've been here. It has changed for the better. Um, I think they just finished out a lot of things that weren't quite complete the last time we were through here. They did a great job of catching old newscasts that were happening on that day. And around the world. Around the world, from all over the US, from Iceland, from Japan, and everything else. I mean, they did a really good job of putting you in that position on that day at that time in 1995. So definitely worth checking out. Just a really, really cool spot. It was a beautiful thing to see. And then we are headed to the National Cowboy Heritage Museum and then we're gonna go get a bite to eat and wrap this day up. Cowboy Western Heritage Museum, so we thought we'd duck off in one of the teepees they had outside. And I think technically this is a lodge. This is a lodge, that's right. We were in the teepee, now we're at the lodge. So my favorite was um, to see all the old um, like saddles and boots and yeah. belt buckles and for stuff from 17, 1800s, early 1900s. I know we saw a pair of boots that was almost 100 yeah, years old. Yeah, or over 100 years old, yeah. So we like that kind of stuff. That was fun. And then there was an area out here for kids to run and play and enjoy themselves, or adults. I was interested to see all the different types of saddles and how they've evolved through the years. And the there's, hat styles. The hat styles were cool. The old boots were cool. The, all the tag and gear was really cool. So we enjoyed it. I came here as a little kid. Um, I don't remember enough to tell you how much it's changed or not, but it's definitely enjoyable. I think it was $15 a person. Mm -hmm. So if you're into Western culture at all, or you just want to check out some cool Western heritage, this is the place to do it. Half. Yeah, it took ahead. us about an hour. An hour, hour and a half. And we, we didn't stop and read every single thing. You know, we kind of looked for stuff that caught our eye, but it is a big place and there is a lot of stuff to do for kids. So bring your kids here. They've got different um, styles on display a different kind of Indian teepees and lodges and dwellings. They've got some awesome bronze sculptures inside and outside. Just a just a really cool place to spend an hour up on the city in the afternoon. But with that said, I'm about three hours past lunchtime and I mean, let's go get something to eat before we get angry. Nice. Dang 
I'd marry you all over again, baby. This is called the Honda. You don't want to you want to get it wide enough to get in, but you don't want to go too wide or your rope won't fly fast enough. And then once you have it set, you come down here, just back off the Honda a little bit like that. Hold one side of your rope on this side. And you just want to swing and we'll do out of Can you fix my Honda for me? <laughs> hungry now <laughs> all this roping cattle and this western way of life i sure worked up an appetite and i don't think that corn's gonna do it do you know how much of that you're gonna have to grind to feed me <laughs> let's go see if we can find something else though okay this is nice we need one of these it's nice <laughs> it's nice in here drag me out of here now let's go Here. You have a functional right above you. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> Those are all baby bags. Yeah.